here at Superturn Global Infrastructure, we have Ziad Sarkis, Director of Research at the Alternative Investments Program at the Wharton School. Welcome, Ziad. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How do investors see infrastructure in emerging markets? There's a distinction to be made between infrastructure investing that's done by governments and by the private sector. The bulk of infrastructure investing is actually done around the world by governments uh, with money uh, from taxes and from bonds. Uh, but then the theme of this conference today is about the private sector and how the private sector invests through private capital funds. Uh, just to put things to perspective, the infrastructure investment world of sorts and the, um, the value of assets out there is over $40 trillion. And there are different estimates of this, uh, of this industry, but when it comes to the private capital space, it's less than half a trillion dollars at the moment. And um, a lot of it is in the developed world, uh, in the United States, in, in Canada, in Western Europe, Japan. Uh, the emerging markets uh, element of that is less than 20%. So less than 20% of $500 billion is in uh, emerging markets. And the bulk of it is in Asia. So when we talk about other locations, such as, say, other geographies, such as, say, uh, Africa, Latin America, Middle East, the investment done by private capital funds is relatively small. Uh, and so focusing on that, the type of LPs that invest in emerging market private capital funds is, is, um, is, is a certain type of LP that is, first of all, interested in investing in emerging markets, that wants to have exposure to infrastructure for reasons that are specific to their portfolio allocations, and uh, they are also uh, interested in the risks and the uh, rewards of emerging markets and, and comfortable with, say, things like currency fluctuations and um, political risk and so on, which happens to be a little bit more prevalent in these, uh, in these uh, regions than, than more developed regions. Um, and on that note, you mentioned a couple mm -hmm. of the risks. What are some mm -hmm. of the challenges of investing in infrastructure in emerging markets? So, so one of them, just like any type of private capital investment, uh, you have to look at currency risks. Uh, ironically, in some, in some markets, in emerging markets, you really don't have that. Like in the GCC countries, in the Middle East, um, their, their currencies are packed to the dollar. And a lot of the CFA franc uh, uh, countries in, in Central and Western Africa, you've got about 14 countries that are using the CFA franc, that, and their currency is, is technically pegged to the, to the euro. So you don't have that. But in a lot of other uh, emerging markets, uh, particularly if you look at, say, Brazil today or Turkey or any of these emerging markets, you, you do have that risk. And it's a bit challenging to to deal with it because there are no uh, perfect answers to address that risk. It depends on the type of infrastructure investment you're doing, uh, other factors that are specific to these countries. So as much as there are risks for currency in emerging markets, uh, as much as there are also risks for political uh, reasons, political instability, uh, they, uh, th knowing the country and making sure that the project itself it has, the, has the right elements for, for success is clearly the, the, the leading um, and, and most important element in any investment. Uh, it's ironic because everybody talks about political risk in emerging markets, but the reality is that we have more political risk today in places like the US or the UK as a result of what we've seen in the last two or three years in, in, in terms of political changes. So uh, political risk is not specific to, to, uh, to, to frontier markets and emerging markets, it's everywhere. And in fact, it's part of this industry, mm. irrespective of where you're investing. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, and in terms of technological advances, how are mm. they impacting infrastructure investments? That's actually a very good question, because on one hand, technology has, uh, clearly, there's an efficiency element. You're seeing technology in just about every new infrastructure project, whether it's in um, in, in highways, in ports, in airports, in uh, parking structures, just about everything. You've seen new technologies coming in and firms that are invested in these new technologies that are specific for infrastructure projects. And uh, the net effect has been more efficiency, uh, decrease in cost all in all. Uh, but also you're seeing new sources of revenue because when you, uh, when you have new technologies, you have new ways of looking at these markets. You can, you can use data to be smarter about how you approach 
uh, new services to consumers, and so there's an opportunity for more revenue. So it's both a, a booster to revenue, and a, um, a, it has a, a good effect on, on decreasing costs, of course. Uh, there is a side to technology, though, that we don't talk too much about these days, or maybe not enough, which is the risk associated with technology. Uh, a lot of the technologies today are being put on the market and they're different technologies talking to other technologies and at the end it becomes a pretty complex system which opens the door to hacking and terrorism and so on which in the long run could be problematic for some of these larger and more strategic infrastructure investments around the world. And so we don't know too much what could happen there and as much as people can speculate it's, it's, a, it's an element that could be problematic down the road and that needs to be taken into consideration too. And so both good and bad if you think about it, yeah. Like yeah. life in general. Like life in general, absolutely. And yeah. then in terms of the, these regions have very diverse regulatory frameworks, mm -hmm. how do investors navigate that? So, so regulatory environments are, are an interesting one too because we think of them as being uh, less good in, in, in uh, certain parts of the world, in emerging markets and frontier markets. In reality, they are, uh, in many of these countries are quite good. It's just that how they're being applied, uh, that's where you get some problems. And in some cases, it depends also on the investors. Some of the investors are able to navigate these uh, regulatory environments better than others because they're more in tune with these ecosystems, maybe because they, um, they, they are more on the ground, uh, or maybe because they know a politician or two and that can help them in different ways. So it's a little bit of a trickier uh, topic to, to discuss. And it varies across all 150 countries that comprise what we call emerging and frontier markets. Ziad, it's yeah. been a real pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah.